173 inches I need. That's Ethan, everyone, doing it old school in his head, cheating with a calculator. Hope you guys are doing well. My name is Matt. We are live in Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina. Beautiful Carolina day here in the spring. Just wanted to say hi to everyone. <clears throat> it's been a while, I think, really, since New Mexico I've been on site. And we've been getting a lot of questions about installing a base. And I thought maybe for warm up, I'd just go live. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, also, I'm not sure how the signal is coming in, but basically, again, we are installing a base and it's one of the most important parts before you put in your chicken coop. And we get asked all the time, how do you do it? And the reason why, you know, I know a lot of people are like, Matt, you don't have videos out there of how to put in a base. And that's because there's really not one right way. Um, it's, it's, it's just like everything else is there's many things to think about and consider when it comes to putting in a base. So what I wanted to show you real quick is just what we're doing today. Now, first things first, we travel everywhere with this little nugget here. It's not necessary, but that's laser level, also known as a transit. And what happens is, first thing you gotta do is we gotta figure out our grade or what our drop is. So right here is where the chicken coop's gonna go. And this is a six by 24. Yes, yes. Thank you, six by 24 American coop. And Looks like the young kid, the rookie, has gotten the fun part. You like digging? It's all right. <laughs> you know who you find out who your real friends are when you hand them a shovel? <laughs> so anyways, I want to show you some key things. Okay, if you guys have any questions, let me know. And hopefully the signal's good. I haven't had a chance to really test it. Um, so first thing you got to do is got to figure out your drop. And then that'll start to answer your questions. Of, well, what should I put down for material down in the bottom? And here, you can probably see already, we're going to be using 4x6 pressure-treated lumber. Uh, putting it on edge. And the reason why we're doing that is it's definitely the most cost effective, believe it or not, still, even though lumber's through the roof. And it will last a very long time. And it really is the least labor intensive. Even though if you do a base like we do, it, it's not the easiest thing, but it's, I think it's, there's reasons for it. I'm about to show you guys all that. All right, so any guesses? Any guesses out there what the drop is? So here is what we're gonna call zero. All right, and here's where the hen house is gonna go. And if we, if uh, ABJ wasn't already trenching, you probably, I uh, know you can keep trenching. No, 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 don't you stop working now. Uh -uh, no, I let you know, keep on, we, we don't stop and work, but we don't stop and talk. We keep on working. I'll just go move over here. No, 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 you're fine. Anyways, th this is just crazy. Now, ABJ, let me ask you, is this your first time putting in a base, right? Yeah. Did you think it was going to be as far off as it is when you first looked at it? No. Yeah, it's deceiving. That is why when I, I tell everyone at the road crew, so not quite three feet, that is definitely quite a bit. Um, believe it or not, so here's what we're gonna do. We come down here and you can do it two ways. Well, it, it's set up now for him digging, but the laser will tell us where we're at. We're down here at zero. We go all the way up here and believe it or not, it has to drop 12 inches. Technically 12 inches on this side, 13 inches over there. So what we do is we'd say, okay, 12 inches, not a problem. Now we know what we got to get for lumber per course, which is per row, all right? And we do like, we don't, I, I don't, I hate to say call it cheating. I like to have one solid footer, whether it's concrete, or in this case, pressure treated lumber. Yes, you could cheat, come in here, terminate that board, come out maybe 12 inches, put another board on top of that. That way you don't have to dig so much. I don't know, I don't like that. Um, and here's why. When we do our bases, check this out. Actually, I'm going to flip this around. We notch everything. And a lot of people ask, well, how in the world do you notch it? Well, it's real simple. I'm going to go over to the chop saw and show you guys. A little trick a lot of people don't know. So we got AV. There's the new guy again, Ethan. You may have seen him in the past. He decided that the grass isn't greener on the other side and want to come back to work for us. Isn't that right, Ethan? It sure is. Uh-huh. You got to get a new hat. So... Here we go. Now don't cut a finger off on camera, but it's real simple. You set your stop block right there. You're gonna make several cross cut, kerf cuts, if you will. Start with your shoulder cut first, because that's the important one. So you can see he's micro adjusting right there. Go ahead. Time is money. Don't cut your finger off. Don't make, I'm not making you nervous, am I? So it's just this simple. Come on, here we go.
We're making him nervous, I can tell. Are we making you nervous? It's him. He's pulling it, not me. We're making him nervous. That's pretty close. All right, that's good enough. All right, so all you do is you make several cuts and notice you got to bump it out with a spacer right there so that the saw blade can come all the way through. So you got a shoulder cut and a cheek cut. All right, well, technically we didn't cut the cheek, but we set the cheek by our depth and AV's gonna show you how we do this. It's really just this simple. You just break them right off. And you're see one of the reasons why we like framing hammers where the claw on the back's a little bit straighter. You can go in there and kind of chip away at it. And it's really that simple. So that's a way to make your notch and he's gonna use a sharp chisel to clean it up because we like to have it nice and clean, don't we AV? We love it clean. All right, so that's how you do that. Now the reason is when you can rest two pieces of wood on top of each other, instead of just butting it and having it slide down like this, it stays a lot more monolithic, if you will. It's gonna be a lot more solid all the way around the perimeter of the base. It takes the weight uh, of the other one and makes it one. Exactly, isn't that what I said? Pretty much, you said monolithic, you use big words. Well, it's not, a, it, just, it's, it all becomes one unit. And then we're gonna drill all the way through and lock it in with rebar. Because here's the other thing, if you ever worked with pressure treated lumber, one of the nightmares can be, you get it from the lumber yard, it's soaking wet, and it probably is fairly straight, and that's because the lumber hasn't had a chance to do anything um, since it was sawed and then treated. And you can get pressure treated dried after treatment. Just a little tip, it's gonna cost more. But anyways, once it starts to dry, now that bore is going to do what it wants. Like, look at this one. You know, you can see a little bit of a curve down there. Does the base keep the water from running in from the sides? Technically, yes. Now, actually, to that point, and I was just talking to, about this with the customer here. She's got a great drop. Actually, from there down to here is actually six feet, believe it or not. So that's the thing. You want the water to come, and you want it to go. And this base will be built up. Let's see if we do our math right. So if we're dropping, say, 13 inches, technically five and five plus three and a half. So it's actually gonna be up about half inch. It can be flush here, but the grade will keep the water, it'll just keep on going. So important. You never want the water sitting around any type of structure, especially around a chicken coop, because you don't wanna have a sanitation issue inside your run, which is why we love the solid metal roof run. So that's a great question. Hopefully that made sense. Um, nice little pickaxe. That works smarter, not harder. That's right. Um, and I tell you, this is the other thing about socks. Tree roots. I can't tell you how many times I got, well, I don't want to say I got lazy. I, maybe I got smarter. I just sacrificed a chainsaw and cut them all out. Are we going to get more coop tours? Yes, I promise. Um, I'm trying to set my life up. Also, that is a hardworking crew you got. Yes, thank you. Um, I got the best guys, the best crew. They're, they're amazing. Any customer that has met any of our team members, especially the road crew, will, will vouch. They know they need to, but they're just, they got big hearts. And that's where you got to start off with. And then from there, you just got to make sure you feed them well. Right, Ethan? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, so I forgot the hell I was. Oh, I, I would sacrifice a chainsaw, cut the roots out. So anyways, um, now luckily, now this is very sandy. And here it brings me to why it's hard to do a video of here's what you do when you put in a base. You gotta figure out your drop, your grade, you gotta figure out your soil composition. Here it's very sandy, which we see a lot, not so much here in the Carolinas, it's usually actually red clay, especially out to Texas. Uh, we get down in the Florida, Alabama area, it's very sandy. So it's gonna be soft. So what we're doing here is by also notching the pressure treated base, locking it all in. The easiest way I can explain is think of it like a boat in the ocean. All right, buildings are gonna settle, but we wanna displace that weight as even as possible create the snowshoe effect, displace the pressure points um, all the way around, and it should keep it from settling. Now, will it still potentially settle? Absolutely. That's just gonna happen with every building, but it's real easy to adjust to settling too, believe it or not, with a pressure treated base. I never thought about that. I never showed you guys how we do that. Another reason why we love anchoring all the pressure treated with these long pieces of rebar. We just cleat it, anchor it, and we can adjust by picking up the pressure treated base, getting it dead nuts level. And then if we have to go underneath, we can put in more soil. And there's many, many ways to do this. You know, if you, and if you really want to get technical and I don't want to say snobby, but you know, it depends on the customer's budget. And we always talk about, here's the pros and cons. Here's what, you know, you can get away with, but if you really want to kick up the game, 
you can put down stone, okay? Put stone in there and then compact it. And that's gonna help make sure that the drainage, water's always gonna take the path of least resistance so that water isn't sitting around the pressure treated lumber. Um, I find that slightly overkill, but I, I know there's people out there be like, well, you should put stone there. Yeah, if we're putting in a, a, a house, and putting in a footer, you actually will put stone down, pour a concrete footer, so on and so forth. But when it comes to a chicken coop, this works perfectly fine. Now, here's the other huge advantage that we need to talk about. Now, think about it, 12 inches, 13 inches. Um, hello from Utah. I was wondering about the bases for the coops, concrete footing, or lumber. Now I see. Well, I would actually like to talk about that a little bit more. What's the difference? Why would I choose concrete or lumber or timber, pressure treated lumber? We're going to talk about that because somehow I got to do a video explaining that. And I don't want to confuse people. I just want to teach you. Here's the things I would think about and then you can make a decision. I already forgot what the hell I was just talking about. <laughs> Believe it or not. AVJ, what was I just about to say? I came over here. I don't. Oh, so think about this. So now if it's going to have to be buried 12 inches down in that corner, that means when we come up here, this is going to be 12 inches above ground. So now you got to think about that. Uh, that's going to make the coop 12 inches taller than you maybe were expecting. So that's not a bad thing. One, okay, round, wherever your run door is, which I don't know where this customer's run door is, you're going to have to put a step in there, okay? No big deal. But just like how awesome, if you don't know this already about our coops, the deep litter system is fantastic. And all that is, is think of it as a bathtub. Well, she can do the same thing now by having this bathtub that the coop is sitting on. She can even start composting and deep littering inside her run. The chickens will love it. You will love it. And ever since we discovered that, I don't know, five, six years ago, and we kept doing bases and customers, and we did bases because the ground wasn't level. And then we discovered the advantage of being able to compost inside the run. We've actually had a lot of customers want the base added, even if the ground's dead flat. Now, let's talk about this. Pr uh, concrete or pressure treated lumber? Most cases, without a doubt, it's gonna come down to budget. Concrete is expensive. Not only is the material expensive, the labor, it, it's pretty intensive. It's not awful. And believe it or not, anyone can really do concrete, but you gotta understand there's no wiggle room. You're not gonna wanna invest into all that concrete if your forms are not perfect. Number two, you're not gonna wanna settle. Think about it. concrete's very heavy and there's actually a lot of advantages to concrete because it's heavy. You know, we talked a lot about that out in Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, where we had a lot of high winds and it was like, what was it 80,000 pounds was gonna help hold that coop down. Um, if you're going to do concrete, one, it looks good, it'll last forever. Um, you're going to want to make sure you either get a good high PSI, maybe add fiberglass or spend a little extra money putting rebar in it. So you keep it from cracking. Anyone that's done concrete or pay for concrete. The first thing any concrete contractor is going to tell you is concrete will end up cracking. You try like hell for it to not crack. Uh, there are ways to prevent it, but it's all about the prep. And then once you pour it, Get it down in there, vibrate it, tap the forms, and then do your finish work on top. It can look sharp. It makes it real easy to tap con down in to the concrete with a sill plate to attach your coop to. And other than that, the biggest advantage other than the weight is if you didn't want to take the time to notch all this lumber so they're stacked on top of each other, staggered like bricks are, um, the concrete becomes all monolithic. It's all gonna be one solid thing. And again, you go back to the whole idea of a boat in the ocean. That's the idea here. So hopefully that makes sense. I can't think of any other reasons, advantages or disadvantages. It's expensive, very expensive. It can be intimidating. This, you got some wiggle room. You cut a board wrong, go back to the lumber yard, hopefully. <laughs> how many uh, How many stores you have to go to until you found your lumber this morning? Two. Well, that's not bad. I heard three. <laughs> um, and of course, yeah, pressure treated lumber is through the roof. You Quay, Lord Farquaad. What was that in uh, that was a Shrek? Shrek. Lord Farquaad. Great movie. That's Ethan. Oh my gosh. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Copy that solid info. Thank you. You are welcome, John. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know. Either that, or I'm gonna split. I, uh, I'm just happy to be back out on the job site. It was kind of a last minute decision, and we do have something coming up. We have a. Uh, Quite an interesting situation all the way down by Palm Springs, just north of Miami, Florida. Hopefully we're gonna be able to be the heroes and fix the situation. And if that is the case, you're about to see a lot of video footage.
which I would like to mention, if you have ordered a coupe or thinking about ordering a coupe, please, please, please understand, this sucks when this happens, it's rare, but it can happen. When we ship a chicken coupe and it goes via LTL, less than a truckload, goes on that carrier, see those big tractor trailers going down the road, UPS Freight, which actually got bought out, so I can't use them anymore, uh, Estes and uh, XBO, one of our favorite ones, you see those big LTL trucks. When they take our coupe, it is out of our possession. And there are times, very seldom, that we run into a problem where the, the driver is not being friendly. There's no excuse for it. Uh, maybe the driver's being lazy and doesn't want help from the customer to unload it. Completely unnecessary. That should not never be the case. But I get it. At the end of the day, it does fall on us. makes us look bad. We do everything we can to explain. When that coupe leaves, leaves our possession, we are at the mercy of that tractor trailer company. We've learned who not to use. There's definitely some companies out there that are horrible. UPS Freight used to be one of my favorites. And they even used airbags in between all their crating and palleting. Someone bought them out. I can't remember who. So hopefully that makes sense. So with that said, we have a situation down in Florida. There's a very good chance. We're going to do what we always do and just swoop in, be the heroes. I'm going to go get this coupe from this shipping company that is being ridiculous and we're just gonna get it done for the customer so hey uh ethan here used to be a landscaper in his last life but now he's a roofer so is it fun is it fun digging it's always fun digging. well it's easier than digging in solar yeah this sand is awesome I've never seen it so sandy in the Carolinas, but it kind of makes sense. All right, I'm going to check, see if you guys have any questions or comments. If you do, leave them down below. Definitely happy to answer anything, anything you want to know. Coops. I know it's not a coop here. Well, there's a lot of parts right there. And they got all the walls in the trailer. Some tea on that coop in Florida. I'm not following. Some tea on that coop in Florida, question mark. I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, here we go. So we got a big piece. I'm going to flip this around. I guess you guys are done seeing me. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the show last week. If you didn't catch video chicken, we did the top 10 backyard chicken keeping myths. These are the best chicken coops around. Thank you, Dottie. Trying to keep it that way. How far from the beach are you? Which beach? I mean, if we were to go, if we were going to go see the ocean today, easy, easy. No, no getting hurt, especially on camera. Um, we can be to Wilmington. I think it's an hour and a half. So we can be at the beach in about an hour and a half. And I do love to go down there, do some fishing whenever I get a second to break away. So you guys made that look real easy. So you get the idea. That's just going to go on top of that one. And they're going to run their first course, which is very important. And once they get that down and it's all nice and level, they'll go around with the transit going on top. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about this. What do you do if you don't have a transit? Well, the easiest solution is a six foot level four foot level but here's what happens here's 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 the art of woodworking check this out anyone that does woodworking is going to appreciate my statement right now it's organic material it doesn't want to stay straight um you got different species that are going to act different you got wood that grew which in a way okay check this out right here look how fast that grew here's summer growth winter growth summer growth winter growth so they're doing that they're designing these trees you can see it grew a lot slower when it got a little bit older um so that we can keep up with demand but that means the tree we've noticed the lumber moves a lot more so it's things to think about also i tell you here's a little pro tip i don't like there's the pith there's the center of the tree technically when you're pulling lumber what i try to do is if that pith can be in the center at both ends, you're gonna be you're gonna have the most consistent board. When it's like this, this board could get funky, especially we're gonna go at the other end. We're gonna see what happens here. I wanna see that pith at the other end, just like that, but opposite or mirrored. So if we go down here and if they sawed it correctly, we should absolutely see that. Which we do. If you guys can see that. Um, if that pith was down here, <laughs> This board don't stand a chance. It's going to move like crazy. Um, but you guys get the idea. So, and that's the other advantage too. I was just thinking about when they're putting this down in, even though it is big timber, you can manipulate it. You can force it straight. And that's another reason why I love doing multiple courses. And it's very satisfying, without a doubt. So satisfying to make wood that is organic, that might not be cooperating right away and you can straighten it out. And here's the other thing too. So notice we got some wane here. This is gonna happen a lot. We would call this a defect. We don't wanna see it, but they purposely already have this board ready to go because it's gonna get buried. You're never gonna see it again, but it's gotta be down there for the other blocks to sit on. 
So that's another beauty of woodworking. You can hide things you don't want to see. And I'll guarantee you they got the best looking lumber for last. Where did you guys have to go get this? <laughs> another thing I just thought about. Here's another little tip. If you do go to buy pressure treated lumber now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of the pressure treated lumber at Home Depot, but I'm glad to see this. I am not familiar with Pro Wood. So SYP, Southern Yellow Pine, very, very common pressure treated in these parts. Ground contact. Believe it or not, there's a lot of pressure treated lumber that's not rated for ground contact. You take that non-ground -con contact rated pressure treated lumber and bury it, it's not gonna last at all. Um, this stuff is purposely designed to for ground contact to be buried in the ground. So very, very important. Not familiar with pro wood. I remember the old yellow wood. I have had so many people call and try to contract us to fix their decks. Their decks are not even 10 years old and the wood is just rotted. It's crazy. But anyways, um, so I saw some comments come in. So I'm gonna jump on them here real quick. I appreciate you guys all watching. I hope you're doing well. Happy Monday. Um, hope it's getting warm wherever you are. I know it's beautiful here. So let's see here. Really appreciate all your videos and the researching how to build my own coop. We have you, have how have you dealt with, ah, I wish they would stay up. I'm so sorry. How have you dealt with your pricing since lumber has become more valuable than gold? Um, gang of greenhorns. Very carefully. <laughs> There's no other way to, to, to say that. Uh, truth be told, I'm, I'm proud of this. Since lumber has skyrocketed going on almost three years ago, I have not increased prices. And the reason why I didn't is I knew we could still get better in-house. And I think anyone that owns any business, that if you want to make yourself better, don't be scared of a little bit of stress and to really buckle down and be smart. Anyone can just go out and raise prices. That's not going to make you better. So truth be told, I said, no, there, I know we can be better. We're not going to raise prices. We're going to make sure we get smarter. Um, and then the other big thing with price increases uh, with lumber, that hasn't actually been the big issue, even though it's insane when it quadruples. Okay. And I did not increase the price on our coops or on the customers that already placed orders. The scarcity has been insane. We just cannot find it. And for a while there, we actually had to import lumber from Europe blew me away but that's the only place we could find it so great question that's just the truth and i tell you it's scary it is scary and, it, and I, what the real scary one is we love our food safe high density polyethylene it's a plastic oil makes plastic we all know what's going on with the oil prices right now through the roof through 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 the roof and i wish uh, i could share with you guys all that we do to um be uh, uh, on guard and protect our, to make sure we don't have to raise prices and um, be proactive for the customer. We really do. It just, that's the beauty of buying from a family owned business. I'll, I'll just put it to you that way. Corporate America, you know, I don't know. I don't like, I didn't like when I worked for corporate America. You were just a number. Uh, and I'm so proud we have grown. Uh, one of my fears has been that we'd get so big that people might frown upon us. But I can tell you, we are still a family owned business. And when I answered, how did we uh, deal with it? We really had to sugarcoat things with the CFO. Non, um, if it wasn't for Nan, I'd be bankrupt. She's the one that has to pay the bills every day, and somehow she just trusted me. We fought through it, and we're still dealing with it. So we're gonna hopefully not have to raise prices. But anyways, um, all right, great question. Let's see what else we got. I saw Kristen just pop up. Uh, Kristen's gonna be here tomorrow, and I guess she's going to get some olive trees or something from the neighbor here. And again, I just, I love seeing what our customers are doing. Hope she doesn't mind me panning over on her property. I'm sure she won't. Super, super nice lady. I wish I did get quite a bit on video, but to hear the things she had to say, uh, the compliments and just, she's so, she wanted me to show this. She's like, man, I could never have done that. And she could have, it would have sucked. No one likes doing this. Um, especially if you're not sure, this is a lot of work if you're not sure, but I guarantee you, this is the best way to do it. Um, okay. If you're going to put in pressure treated lumber. All right. Top chat, let's see here. I'm glad it's come through here loud and clear. Do you have chickens at your house? At my house personally, or are there chickens here? Because this is not my house, this is our customer's house. Um, I've been gone for a year and a half. I gave Nan two hours to pack up with the kids and the dog, and I said, we're hitting the road, we're going down North Carolina buying a building. We still have not been back home. We plan on going back to our farm 
May 1st, I had to give all my chickens and my goats and turkeys and bunnies to our farm hand to take to her farm. So she's been watching them this whole time. I can't wait to get back. I don't know if I'm gonna do chickens in New York again, as far as egg laying hens. I do plan on probably raising meat birds, which I really wanna share with you guys. I know that's a touchy subject. People are like, oh, I don't wanna raise meat birds and have to slaughter them. I get it. I am a huge animal lover, but we need to be real. And I tell you, it's getting scary out there. And anything you can do to raise your own protein on your own property, you may wanna really start thinking about it. Anyways, um, I'm gonna raise a lot of chickens too because it's, I have found it's the best thing. If you have dogs and they have an allergy, the best thing to do to eliminate that allergy is feed them raw chicken. Bones, everything. I couldn't believe it. it's called the barf diet, bones and raw food. It's, it, and when you think about it, it's what dogs are meant to eat. So it's actually a, a great way to provide your own dog food at a very affordable price. All right, um, so if I am gonna get chickens, it's gonna probably be meat birds but not egg laying hens until we buy our farm down in North Carolina, which I can't wait to do. That's a whole nother story. All right, going back to here. This is exactly how we built our foundation and gave the chickens bare dirt in the run. Yes, Lisa Haymaker down in South Carolina. Uh, love that you're there, hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, and it's not terribly hard, but I think, you know, we'll make sure this gets posted and you'll be able to watch it down the road for people that are like, well, how do I put in the base? And I'm sure I'm forgetting things. We take it for granted. When you do this every day, I take things for granted. So if you have questions, let me know. What are the things that maybe I'm not explaining? Um, oh, I was going to, oh, that's, I'm being an airhead today. I apologize. So I was starting to explain to you guys, if you don't have a transit, you can use a level. Then I got off tangent. The problem with a level, especially if you're going to have such a long run, and you're going to try to level that off. If your board starts to get a little manipulated and there's a little bit of bow or crook or framer is going to call crown it's gonna make it that much more difficult and it's gonna manipulate how you may think you're doing leveling it off it's the only way i can explain it the easiest way guaranteed all right it's called a poor man's level you get a long piece of clear tubing quarter inch three eighths half inch it don't matter fill it up with water and then those two ends of that line that water is always going to level off that is basically what we're doing right now with a laser level and then you can just set your timbers to that water level wherever you put the water level wherever you start it all right so hopefully that makes sense a real easy affordable way to be as i like to call it, dead nuts it's just a term my father taught me years ago growing up in construction and it's just it's just dead nuts i don't know how else to say it um you can do strings with a string level, a little bubble on a string. Just gotta make sure they're tight. I think that's a lot of work. I've tried that and you can measure down, you can measure up from it and then you're gonna bump it. And I don't know if I, if you wanted to level this off perfectly and you didn't have a laser level, poor man's level I think is the way to go. Um, so we have pigeons and they are, oh gosh, I wish that would stay up. I, if anyone knows how to get the comments to stay up on Instagram and is it coming in good laterally? I'm not on Instagram. What am I on? It's kind of a week I had last week. I'm still recovering. I'm on YouTube. All right. Hopefully it's coming in well, being that it's flat. I'm getting confused. I'm too old to keep up with all the other social media. So we have pigeons and they are too small to drink from either poultry nipples or cups, it seems. Have you ever made a coop for them? What's the ideal water setup? All right. So truth be told, a little fun fact about me, if you guys care. Um... When I was an exterminator and we used to have to exclude pigeons from a building, I became fascinated having a coworker who used to raise pigeons and he would bring them to work and let them go. And I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, I'm training them to fly back to his house and they'll actually scan a badge. Well, anyways, and then he'll, they'll race them from like Tennessee and fly all the way back to New York. Anyways, fell in love with pigeons and I have yet to build pigeon coops. I actually want to. It's just been a little busy with chicken coops, but that is in my future goal because who knows? That might be a technology that's going to have to come back soon. So I don't know. I don't know what pigeons would even drink out of. I just know that when the time comes for me, I'm going to try to figure out what's going to be the easiest, what makes the most sense for the animal, what makes the most sense for the human. You guys ever raised pigeons? No. Raised pigeons? Raised pigeons. The only person yeah. I ever know through that is Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Yeah, Iron Mike. Love Iron Mike. Anyways, so I don't know. I don't know what they drink out of, so I can't help you there. I apologize. How you guys doing? All right, so check this out. It's definitely a two-man job, so they decided to go with 16-footers, which is good. It's a lot less cuts. It'll stay. It'll displace that weight a lot better. I'm coming with an Olive Agar chick and to help build right now or tomorrow. 
I think it was tomorrow. Yeah, she told me you were bringing an olive agar. All right, so going back to, I know there's some comments I miss. And uh, can you make a video on how to do your chicken water system? How to do your chicken water system? I have videos out there troubleshooting it. Um, if you watch them, you can figure it out. I never thought about doing a video how to make it yourself because we sell them. Um, I have videos out there on how to troubleshoot them. And I tell you, those water systems are a love-hate relationship. They work great, but everything's got to be perfect. One kink in the chain and it will fail on you. I just know I invented the water system, our heated water system, because you are looking at probably the laziest chicken owner you've ever met. Um, I didn't want to work any harder than I had to. And that's how the whole water system came about. But if you watch our videos, it's be easy to figure out. We have, a, we have sold our coops for pigeons. We have. Okay, so that's Kristen. If you guys see the comments coming up, she's one of our sales girls. Uh, been around for quite some time. I didn't know we sold pigeon coops. That's embarrassing on my part. Um, I know it's up to 40 people. I appreciate it. I had no idea there's going to be this many people watching. I hope you guys are doing well. If you're wondering, we are live in Fuquay, North Carolina, and putting in a base. Tomorrow, they're going to be putting in an American coop. Hopefully, if they get the base done, I came out to. This is a last minute thing that the customer had us do. She was hoping to have it done before we got here. But I said, if you want to pay us to do it, we'll do it. And then you don't got to worry about a thing. We have plans for bales. You're losing me. I don't know what you mean there, Kristen. All right, so I'm going to go back to top chat. This is a lot easier on video chicken. I drive it. The obvious problem with your coops are packing your length, but long skids. I'm losing the comments. I apologize. I wish they would. If anyone on YouTube or has used YouTube live and knows how to get the comments to stay up. That'd be great. Save, highlight, mute, no, I don't know. Let me try one more time. So we get our coops all down on a four by six pal. We ship them every day and never have problems. Well, very, very once in a blue moon. I just hate when there is a problem that was completely out of our control. And do um, you have chicken coops that you can incorporate rabbits? If so, I can hear some details about that. So actually, we have done that. And this customer, when she was out here talking to me, she just said, Matt, I'm going to be putting rabbits inside the run. That's why she went with the bigger run. I'm not a rabbit expert, but what I have been told from our customers that we built rabbit housing for in with the chicken coop, it's, just, it's, it's extremely easy. We've done a lot of where we've separated the run walls so that you can separate your males and females to control the population. But other than that, it's fairly easy another way to start thinking about having your own meat and not to mention too i've never done it myself but i hear the rabbit droppings are a phenomenal fertilizer because you can't burn it you can't um we have plans for bases for our customers and we'll update on site prep yeah so kristen's been on me for all the people out there like gosh can you guys please please do a video on site prep <sighs> this was supposed to be my warm-up i'm trying to there's just so many variables so you got the lumber or concrete and then the question is are you going to put it in or are you going to have a contractor put it in if you're going to have a contractor put it in i can promise you uh, and customers will vouch for us i just have the contractor call us directly we draw blueprints and schematics send that to them bypass the customer because that can get kind of confusing and just hope that the contractor does it right we've had a couple times the contractor was way off with concrete believe it or not not level out of square and here we go to be the heroes and that happens but just make sure you get a good contractor most of them should do a really good job just have them call us and yes we do have the plans to do the notching all the different sizes so another thing that comes up is and actually i don't know what they're doing i'm going to ask them when i do a base i'm pretty confident in uh my measuring skills and the construction and i know these coops are the exact dimension. So I like to make the inside wall of the base flush with the inside wall of the coop. So there's no wiggle room. And that might scare some people, but numbers don't lie. The tape measure never lies to you. Well, unless I guess you break it. Um, but you can, well, I guess we, I guess we talk on the phone while we're working. That better be Evan. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go harass him. Anyways. Um, I think a lot of customers, when we do send them drawings, they do want the wiggle room, so we'll bump it in an inch. So I don't know, Kristen could probably vouch for that, or if there's any customers watching that we've done that for. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. I just know I try to make the run as big as possible. Even an inch all the way around can add up, and if you can't free range. The other thing too is, what is nice about using pressure treated lumber, it's real easy if you wanna 
toe screw your coupe down to the timbers to keep it from blowing away. That's nice and easy. Um, or if, it's, if the inside base is flush to the inside walls and you didn't want a toe screw, you can just use um, like mending plates, flat galvanized plates that just face screw right to it. And then that way you don't have, if you have that one inch shoulder coming down to the edge, you got to bend them. We've done that with our brake. It's real easy, but it's not fun. If you don't have to do it, then don't do it. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why it's nice to be flush. Now, if you got concrete, same thing. You don't want to be wrong with your numbers. So you better hope your contractor, you are measuring correctly. Go corner to corner too. So easy to tell if these bases are square or not. Tape measure will not lie. Geometry doesn't lie. Corner to corner, you'll get it square. All right. And for whatever reason, guys are just joining us. We are live in Fuquay, North Carolina, putting in a six by 24 foot American coupe. And it was a last minute decision. Uh, the customer elected to have us put in the base. There it is. And I did it at the beginning of the video, but I'll show you guys here real quick. We like to notch everything, don't we, AV? I love notching. <laughs> ah, I was wondering what my leaf blower went. Um, one of the great tools to have on site. Oh, I like this. Whose idea was it to finally put all our scrap in the box? Who's AV's idea? See, veteran. <laughs> veteran move. All right, so we're going to notch. He drew his line. We got our stop. And he's going to do his shoulder cut first. And that's the cut that matters. Maybe I'll come on this side. See, so we got to get that perfect. And you got to have a block back here so the blade can come all the way through. Go ahead. You don't got to stop. If you guys can tell on the audio there either that wood's nice and dry or that blade's getting dull that wood is nice and dry yeah i was gonna say you can hear it and then here's where the magic happens that always reminds me what does that remind you of when you do that av you, you, that's right which one no. no, I'm just kidding. It's not the one that's, it's not wax on, wax off. No, that always reminds me. Someone out there knows Karate Kid 2. Break the ice, Daniel son. Huh? Right? So look it. That does such a good job. Now AV's gonna come in with a nice sharp chisel, kind of like that. Um he yeah, there you go. Nice sharp chisel. You, it is nice to have a bigger one, like a lot of timber framers will use a larger one, but this will work. And all you're doing is going down to the bottom of technically the um I'm sideways here, the cheek cut. Um, and those cuts right there, set your depth. Here, watch this, watch this. And you always trust that the back of that chisel is dead flat and if it's nice and sharp. Yeah, hold that for me. See, just like that. You trust the bottom of that blade. The blade will not lie to you. You can really get fancy. But what matters is that, that, and that line right there because you're not gonna see the inside. Very nice. That's all there is to notching. It's just that he's now you can do that with a skill saw. If you use a chop saw, it is good to have the buddy system. Are you guys buddies? Wow, did you hear that silence? Now, what happens on the job site, in case you guys are wondering, someone will come back over here, need to cut all the way through the board, they'll lift that up, and then the person's gonna come over and notch and not realize that's down and cut all the way through the board. Isn't that fun? What's going on here? You got a what? What's going on? Explain to us what's going on. We got a little... What's that called? That's a bow. Thank you. So we got a little bow, so we're going to try to you can sit overnight. No, you can take the bow out because you're rebarring it. Especially if you pivot rebar and then straighten rebar. Oh, hell yeah. Sitting overnight. Is that dry or wet? Dry. It's, 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 it's not going to get... Technically, the trick is to hose it down and it'll straighten out, but we don't need to do that. You can take that boat. Yeah, you got that. Look at all. You can use all that extra weight on you. Oh, that's right. You lost 30 pounds. Good job, buddy. No, I didn't. <laughs> that's what you told me. 53 people watch it. It's almost like video chicken. Um, Carolina Coops is a notch above. Thank you, Joan. Wait, is that the Joan? I think it is. Um, geez, that's got to be strange. Uh, <laughs> 55. This is turned into video chicken. Now I kind of wish we had the whole crew here 
Uh, question, do you use, thank you for mentioning question. That actually helps me. Do you use any substrate to keep proper drainage in the run? It is you, do you like this? Thank you, Joan, everyone who's letting us um, show off her property here. Thank you, Joan. We have the best customers. Chicken people are always the best customers. Uh, I hope I'm doing a good job making you proud. Yes. Good, <laughs> she's great. Um, proper drainage for the run. Excellent question, because it gives me another point to brag about our coops. The worst thing you can do when you're building a chicken coop is have a run that is not solid roofed. I get it, it's cheaper to screen the top, but you will regret it, especially when you're out here in the woods, because then you're gonna have all these leaves on top of the run screen, but more importantly, it's gonna get wet inside. And that you don't want that because the chances of it continuing to run off is very slim to none, unless you put in like French tile drainage around and stone inside. I couldn't even imagine to have to make sure we get the inside of the run to drain correctly. You don't have to just by having a solid roof over your run. That's why we do it on all our coops. Now, another huge mistake I see all the time when people are building their own coops is they still won't put a solid roof over the run, but they'll make it even worse. They'll build their hen house and they'll pitch the roof into the run. I get it because you got the doors on the backside, so you want to have more wall space. Yeah, welcome to chicken coop designing 101. It, there's always that domino effect. Um, so with that said, biggest thing, don't have a run without a solid roof. But here's, here's, here, here's a point, okay? Try to imagine this with me. You're gonna have a wall here and you're gonna have, we have a gabled roof, so we will have water that will come off right here. So the easiest thing to do is if you're really worried about it, put on a gutter, okay? Come down to your low spot, put the down spout right here and off down to the woods you go. Again, have it come and go. Um, or even when that water falls off that roof and gets down here, you don't ever want it to drain back to the foundation. That would be a big problem. So you always have to make sure, especially the first time it rains when your coop is up, watch how the water's flowing. If you have to build up a berm, then you want to do that. You may have to have just a little, uh, I don't know, just a little trough, if you will, a little trench. Just make sure that water has a path to go. Um, if you can't do that and you don't want to do gutters, French drain. That's the easiest thing to do. You trench around the outside of the coop. You dig down. Gosh, every, every place is going to be a little bit different. You don't have to go far, maybe 12 inches, 18 inches. And then you put down a little layer of stone and then you put your corrugated, it's usually four inch black corrugated pipe or tile. And, um, that's perforated. You put that down with screen, especially here where you got a lot of sand. And then you put stone back over top of that. And then you put soil on top of that. And the reason is water always takes a path of least resistance. So when that water settles down to the ground, you don't want it sitting there. It will continue as long as you have it pitched right. Follow that tile, that corrugated perforated pipe. And you just send it right on down. Just like you probably do with your gutters. It's really that simple. But it's not necessary, in my opinion, in most situations. Hope that answered your question. I can't remember who had that question. And thank you for saying question. That actually helped me a lot. Um, I, wanna, I want a house just so I can afford one. Um, gee, my, uh, here, isn't necessary because of the solid roof run? Yeah, there's Chris turning out on the money. Why is it important to lay the concrete for your base? Why is it important to lay the concrete for your base? Roblox Master 5000. <laughs> you sure you're not my son? Uh, God, he loves Roblox. I'm not, I'm not following the question. Why is it important to lay the concrete for the base? Or why is it important to use concrete? Like what would be your decision to use it or not? Um, like moisture in the wood because of the rain. Well, the concrete will last. Should, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. It'll probably last just about forever. Pressure treat is not what it used to be. Without a doubt. I remember building decks as a kid that are still standing, but... 35 years ago, pressure treated isn't what it is today. They've eliminated the arsenic and other chemicals. I'm sure we probably weren't even aware of that was in the lumber back then. But the whole idea is the chemicals that are in the lumber is so that the things that actually destroy the wood can't live. And, and, and truth be told, I do actually, and actually I was just on the phone with another huge company down in South Carolina that does the treatment. And I'm actually be having a meeting soon, talking to the scientists there. And actually, it was so fascinating. When I originally talked to him, before we even got into it, I asked him if he would ever come on Video Chicken. And I forgot to mention that to Ingrid, our marketing director, who creates the shows. 
I don't know if you guys would appreciate that, to really learn what's in that pressure-treated lumber. Not just for putting in a base for a chicken coop, but I see a lot of people use this for your gardens. It's always kind of freaked me out a little bit, especially if you're growing rooted vegetables, if that's what you call it, carrots. You're not going to want them close to the base. But you also got to be careful, too, that people that work for these companies might have a biased opinion. Well, you never know. Um, so I guess you just kind of have to think pros and cons. The lumber is supposed to last 30 to 40 years. That's what they say. I just know that I don't want to pick on Home Depot and get sued, and especially by yellow wood. I've seen it work, and I've seen it not work. I've never seen any other type of pressure-treated lumber brand not work. Not sure what happened there. All right. Um, what's, what's he talking about over there? Are oh, you got this all notch? Huh? You got this all notch? Or, I don't know what's wrong with me today. All dug? Yeah, I dug it all so it's lower. You think that's straight enough? We're about to find out. Huh? I dug it all so it's lower because it's easier to put back and dig up. Well, yeah. Do we have our hand tamper? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the comments and questions. I hope I'm not missing a bunch. Um, so I hope that answered Roblox Master. I hope that answered you. Why is it important to lay the okay? Question: Do you have? Okay, got that. Okay, it seems like it would be pretty amazing. Join the map. Roblox, that was very nice. Um, watching my backyard YouTube, it happens. These guys rock. Thank you, Joan. Um, and we did get some good video footage with her and i love the reel and someone gave us a compliment last week on the video chicken one of the things i love about our show is it, it is what it is and i don't know if you caught earlier i talked about this little nightmare we're dealing with down in florida the customer um we're gonna work something out to make them happy not our fault the shipping company is not making me very happy it makes us look bad we're gonna go down remedy it and he goes yeah we'll do a video together don't worry i won't talk about what happened with the shipping company i said no talk about it I don't care. I want people to see the real deal, and that's what we're doing right now. And if I could keep these chats up at the top, I'm going to go. All right. Um, I didn't understand that T. I'm glad you guys appreciate the videos. I enjoy doing them. It's actually a break from my mundane job of the legalities of a business. Chicken bones will only hurt dogs if the bones have been cooked. That is true. Thank you. I'm glad I saw that. A lot of people don't realize that. And I said the same thing when I first learned about the barf diet. I was like, you can't feed dogs chicken bones. And he said, yeah, you can if it's raw. And then he went on further and said, Matt, think about this. What do wolves eat? I was like, yeah, yeah. So I can tell you firsthand, I still have people think I'm crazy. I will buy whole chicken, um, chop it up into small pieces, bone everything. There's no discrimination. It don't matter and the dogs love it here's what happens i know this is a chicken show but we are talking about chicken and you can use other meats but chicken is the most affordable and the dogs seem to love it when you feed a dog and this might be true for cats too i don't know if um you feed a dog raw meat here's what i saw happen immediately that proved to me i'm feeding them the right thing one my first dog that I did was my English Bulldog. He just started, he stopped drinking water. And I actually thought something was wrong. He just didn't need to drink so much. So that told me when you're feeding a dog dry food, we're dehydrating him a little bit too much. And he should be. He's getting all the moisture, almost all the moisture he needed from his raw diet because it was so wet. Number two, here's the best part. I'm going to gross you guys out. If you get grossed out easy, well, whatever. Um, proof's in the poop. <laughs> just made that up. I don't know. God, you can tell a lot about your health, right? Through your feces. Anyways, so when the dogs defecate, their body is absorbing, I don't know the percentage, a lot more of the food than they do if it's dry food, where when they defecate, it's so small and literally disintegrates in a couple days. There's none of this piles of dog poop. You got to go out on a Sunday morning and clean it up. No. So that those two things told me right away, feeding raw chicken bone and everything to the dogs chopping up nice and small was the best thing ever and then it goes on and on it, it's their, their jaws are meant to eat bones it cleans the teeth it works certain muscles check it out so um but that is true and i thought the same thing you're not supposed to feed dog chicken bones only cooked bones you're not supposed to feed them good i'm glad you guys found that interesting because i didn't want to bore you but i just i do love sharing the things that i have found that I've learned and seen it firsthand that I wish I would have learned earlier. My husband says I'm a Carolina Coop addict. 
Laugh, uh, when I am working around the house, I play all of your videos when I'm working. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, I, I love I, I love that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and hopefully we're going to have even more new informative videos. I love going live because I love to interact with you guys. I, I'm not doing well. We're trying TikTok and Instagram and YouTube shorts. I hate it. I hate it. I, I just, I don't know. I'm not doing a good job. I need to hire someone. If anybody wants a job, move to North Carolina or follow us around the country. Just doing videos, let me know. Um, especially social media. I, I don't like it. All right, so let's go back up there. So, Ron, I appreciate that. I'm glad it's informative. Because that's the deal, you know. Um, YouTube shorts are the worst. Uh, well, they're the worst to make. I'm not sure if you mean making them or watching them. I love them. I hate to admit it. I love watching TikTok videos. But making them... I just don't have it. I don't have the, gosh, you know, we could have some awesome YouTube shorts and TikTok. Did everyone just catch that? Now, if you got hurt, I'm not paying for that, but that was pretty cool. That was, that was, was that your karate kid moment? Yeah, it was. <laughs> we should have re, <laughs> we should have reenacted it then. You got another one? Oh, we got three more to do. do Good. Now, if you one. hurt your hand, I'm not paying yeah, for but it. This one was dry. So it snapped off easy. I was just going to say, okay, yeah, exactly. It'll snap <laughs> even easier. The wet ones still have some forgiveness. The fiber's still got... And technically, truth be told, I was talking about this earlier. There's a lot of things people don't understand. I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if I taught AV. When you're pulling, especially timber, one of the secrets, that's a bad example, is you want to see consistency. So I'm going to pick on this one. So this is, this is nice. All right. So we see the pith was somewhere around here, the side of the tree. But we got some smiley faces, nice and consistent going down. Now, I want to see, when I go to the other end, I want to see the same thing. If you don't, there is a high probability this board, ooh, see? Oh, you can see it already. Okay, so, and now granted, I know these guys, you're at the mercy of what you find in there. This actually is scary. See how they completely change? Those ones were flat. These ones are almost vertical. The potential for this, and you can almost see it. The potential for this one to twist is huge, huge. Now look at this one. See the pith right there? Okay, so I'm gonna go to the other end. But luckily, is that one pretty dry? Uh, that feels pretty wet. Hmm. Yeah, so it's about in the same spot. So that's that's kind of the secret pressure treated lumber. Doesn't always work, but it can help you get some consistency in trying to predict what that wood's gonna wanna do when it really dries. Where should you source the PVC half inch 19 gauge mesh? From us. We sell it all the time. We do import it. I hate that we do, but American made hardware cloth is medical grade, ridiculously expensive. We do import it. And that's another way where we are able to keep our costs down to pass it along to you guys. And we buy it by, geez, 120,000 pounds at a time. It's, it's, it's a stupid amount, but we sell it. We sell it all the time. So if you need it, just give us a call. Might even be on our website. And speaking of the hardware cloth, we're very particular. There are certain things you want to pay attention to. If you find hardware cloth out there that seems the price is too good to be true, that's because it's, it, they welded it after the wire was galvanized. That's a big no-no. But you'll never know because it's covered in PVC. Well, you may find out until it's too late, unfortunately. All right, so... I guess we'll just do one more quick notching. What part of the medical field is using hardware cloth? Um, you know, I asked that question and it was for sanitizing medical equipment. And it was a screen material. Like it, you'd have to see it. I knew right away when I saw it, when they proposed it to me, I was like, man, that is nice looking stuff. That's high class. They told me the price. Uh -uh. your heart out that was pretty damn good all right are we gonna hold on now let's what are you gonna do a little bit more wet you got this it, you got it you got you don't just go for it like you, I, the, you don't understand tv do you 
I um, understand TV, and I also understand TV dinners. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're supposed to give a little bow. Now, I can tell you, I'm not surprised by that because of this grain. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I knew that was going to break differently versus if the grain was going this way, but not a big deal. Now, if I may make a suggestion, because this is going to be... AV don't care. AV just wants to get it done. This is the one time if we really wanted to be particular. Is this going on the end or no? Will this be seen or no? This will not be seen. Okay. Because what I would do, only again, because our growth rings are going this way, I would score and snap that, sever those fibers. Versus if that grain was going vertical, it would not be a big problem at all. Okay. Well, I was hoping Ethan was going to do his karate kid. That is not the right way to break those. Yeah, see, no, this is those pieces from the we curve cuts. Yeah, we are professional. Oh, great. Nan's watching. Look, way to go, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some Carolina Coops hats. I didn't realize you guys. I have Carolina Coops hat, but I uh, got them from the biggest uh, truck stop in the world. Iowa. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I paid Yeah, I know, but you had the opportunity to see the world's biggest truck stop. Oh, and it was yeah. purple. Well, yeah, where have your purple shirts been? You're not wearing purple anymore? No, I do. The color of kings? I do, but they, uh, yeah. I need to get new ones. Not sure what happened to the old ones. All right. So many people are watching. I definitely appreciate it. This is like a video chicken. I didn't mean that. I was just really just trying to get a video of site prep. Um, there is one I think I was going to show you guys, just in case you guys had a question, especially if you're thinking about getting a coop from us and want to know turnkey. Because I tell you, the best thing about turnkey, you don't do a damn thing. I, I learned when I used to work for bosses i used to always tell them just let me do my job i'm gonna make your life easier and that's why i tell my customers now just let us do our you don't have to worry about a thing um add ginger what did i miss okay so we're gonna go back to the comments real quick add ginger love ginger i'm eating sushi i'm glad that made sense hopefully that made sense about the the rings and the pith um, are most catalog Carolina Coops prefabs in your shop and sent to the site or many custom builds on site? Um, as far as numbers, without a doubt, I would have to say 90% of them are prefabs, get shipped right out the door. So what does prefab look? I was just thinking about showing you guys. I'm going to go, hopefully we still got good signal out there. I'm going to show you what prefab looks like. It's real simple. Whew. I need some water. Man, it is sandy here. I'm going to show you. All right, so we'll flip this around. I have not been in the trailer, so hopefully it looks good. <laughs> this is killer right here. Check this out. That is great. You get a pile of mulch dropped from the truck, and you can do so much with that. Anyways, so here we are. Oh, AVJ's hiding in here. What are you looking for? What? Oh, that's scary. What do you need WD-40 for? Uh, for cutters, because I got dirt stuff in it, and now they... Kind of we definitely have WD-40. All right, so here's her coop, and that's what it looks like. We just strap it right to the walls, and usually we can fit about four coops in here, and then all the tools go to the nose. This trip's been a little, huh? Yeah, don't forget them. So there's going to be WD-40 somewhere in here. Um, so that's what it looks like. Not sure if you guys have any questions about that. And, you know, they didn't need to number it. We know what walls they are, but we just sticker number them. Beautiful dug fur. Everything is pressure treated at the bottom, even though the coop's going on pressure treated. It's really that simple. All right. So, wait a minute. You can't take the sawzall. Take a sawzall and chop whatever you're trying to chop. Okay. That's I'll, fine. I'll still just want to spray it just so they're, like, easier for her. All right. Or we may have to buy her some new ones. If Joan, if you're still watching, we're sorry. Joan was so nice she gave up her, um, what do you call those things, like, pruners? Cutters? Yeah. To cut through all the roots. That's the worst part about digging in the woods are the tree roots. I have sacrificed many chainsaw blades. Just, it does the job. I guess that's a pro tip. <laughs> For raw dog food, you can add raw eggs and ginger to prevent tumors in purchases and organic coconut oil. I had no idea. I knew there had to be a lot more to it. I just do the chicken, some vegetables, um, and he gets his raw eggs. A lot of people, I think, are freaked out about that, but I've been doing it for years, and the dogs love it. Oh, and that was the other thing I was going to say. So our French Mastiff, if you haven't seen Gus, he's around somewhere on videos and whatnot. He's a picky eater, 
and started to get a horrible skin allergy. And I said, well, I'm going to have to start a raw diet with him. He eats a lot more than my bulldog did. Um, and it's 3% their total body weight per day. And the other nice thing about the barf diet, and this makes sense again, you know, you got to think about what, the, what do wolves do in nature. Um, you only feed them once a day. Sawzall plus a 12-inch dado pruning blade for the roots. <laughs> dado, 12-inch dado blade? Huh? Potatoes? Dado. No, I like potatoes. You know, are you getting hungry? You know, for a record, I have not eaten yet today either. And worse off, I think maybe I had a cup of coffee. I right. had a cup of coffee. And then, so you're saying you're going to buy dinner for us, right? Okay, I was clean. <laughs> I, I, I like my space. Thank you. <laughs> that was a yes. I heard yes. So look at here. So what do we got here? So is this the one that... Is going in the ground? Yes. Yes, good. Yeah. So that's the beauty. You got to look at your lumber and kind of start making decisions. Where are you going to put what? And again, it's all going to be locked in. Good job, buddy. Give the eggshell to it will help the dog's bones. I never thought about that. Ugh. Yeah, give the dog give the dog eggshells too. I know you give eggshells to the chickens. Okay, I'm gonna skim through the comments. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. If not, I got a boogie. Um, so wait a minute, Nan says you 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 have add ginger, coconut oil. And I'm sure he. That's why he's such a picky. I've never seen a dog. I think I have a skin tags. Anybody know how to get rid of skin tags? Does that mean you're getting old? Is that too much TMI? All right. All right, I hope you guys are doing well. I may not be doing video chicken this Friday too. Just to for maybe this can count as video chicken. Maybe we can do it tomorrow when the coop's going up. Would you guys like to see the construction of the coop? We were gonna do a time lapse video. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. Let's do a time lapse video. Again, we have them out there just so because a lot of people do ask you what what does it take to put a coop together. Oh, that that'll work too. Yeah. Okay. Hell, screw it. Get the grinder. I mean, that's not what I meant by the sawzall, but I guess it'll work. Let's see how this works. Skin tags feed on crabs. Keto will reduce them. Crabs. Yeah, that's just going to burn. Get the sawzall. Let's grab the sawzall and the blade. It'll. You couldn't find it? Where's the sawzall? Why? You guys are supposed to travel? With the tools I provide, so now we're wasting time. Yeah, we got a root that is in the way because we don't have a sawzall. How many sawzalls do we own? The tree. Okay, Sean, that is a Sean comment if I ever heard one. All right, guys. Um, love y'all. Hope you're having fun. Happy Monday. May or may not see you this Friday. Love that you hung out with us this afternoon. That was a pleasant surprise.